I want to finish this story about uh, these uh, five gaps today, uh, but um, I want to go back a little bit still, uh, even to explain the importance of the of this gap gamma, mm. um, or what it really means model theoretically or algebraically. Um, so uh, just to remind you, um, H will be an ungrounded uh, Hardy field. <clears throat> um, its asymptotic couple uh, is denoted as usual by gamma comma psi, and uh, the we assume that the valuation is non-trivial. <clears throat> So that means gamma is not just the zero, the, consists not just of zero, which is equivalent to saying that um, that the Hardy field is not completely contained in in the real field, right? And then we defined we can then choose a sequence of um, positive infinite elements um, indexed by the ordinals less than some infinite limit ordinal. <coughs> such that the valuations of the L rho are strictly increasing to zero. So if you uh, look at the picture there, the valuations of the L rho uh, lie on the negative X axis and they go towards zero and approach it as um, arbitrarily closely, but in such a way that the valuations of the daggers, the valuations of the L rho daggers, uh, which are on this, um, um, slowly varying um, curve there <clears throat> that they go uh, also that they are also strictly increasing in in uh, in the value group <clears throat> right and then we uh, can uh, and these L rho daggers we denote them by gamma rho and you can think of them and this is I put here quotes because this is not of course not to be taken literally uh, as one over the product of the LIs uh, for I less than equal to rho. Um, now, of course, if you are in the Liouville closure of the reals, then these L rows can be taken to be just the LNs. And then this would be, then you can, and then this would be literally true. <clears throat> and uh, the, the cut gamma itself is, is, you can think of symbolically as the dagger of this cut, yeah, and as the as one over the product of the, this infinite product, so to say, of the L row. Again, this is purely suggestive notation, not to be taken literally. Although there are contexts where one can make sense of that in a literal way. <clears throat> and then we have gamma free means that uh, this cut is not realized. Oh yeah, in fact, I didn't even define. Uh, I didn't use this term gamma free. Um, and in fact, in our book, for example, we only use the term lambda free and omega free. But now I, I'm thinking, why didn't we define gamma free also in the obvious way, namely that this cut is not realized, <coughs> which is um, equi equivalent to that there is no gap in, in the asymptotic couple. And of course, since we are assuming that we are in the ungrounded case, um, um, that is also the same as saying that we are, that we have asymptotic integration. <clears throat> um, now, uh, I want to actually do something I didn't do last time, namely I want to um, <clears throat> construct um, a Hardy field that is not gamma free. It's not, you, you see, a random Hardy field will be gamma free, but for it's important to realize that there are also those that are not gamma free and but to construct them, you have to go into what I call trans logarithmic territory. <clears throat> um, so, um, first of all, there is a Hardian element, an element that lies in a Hardy field that is bigger than all the reals, but smaller than all the iterated logs of X, right? That is actually a non-trivial fact that come that that Rosenlich I think was not yet aware of and I think he asked this question whether such things exist but uh, Bozhenitsyn um, in Bozhenitsyn's work this can be these things can be obtained <clears throat> um, 
well, actually, if you you can even go back to to work of Knezer in the um, 1940s for uh, examples of such functions. Uh, in Knezer's examples, you can get something something that's that's um, real analytic. That's right. Yeah, but it's easier to well. Okay, now you um, so L omega does generate a Hardy field over R, but it's not L omega that you take. You take the dagger of it, which is of course um, lies still in the same Hardy field generated by L omega, but is strictly smaller. It generates a strictly smaller Hardy field, <clears throat> and that is not gamma free. And the reason for that is that you can show that the valuation of it is a gap in the asymptotic couple of 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 this. So that is a uh, explicit construction of a, a not gamma free uh, Hardy field. <clears throat> and um, right. And now I want to. Um, say something more about the significance of um, these model algebraic and, and model theoretic significance of uh, <clears throat> of this particular cut, which I didn't really do, but it's important that to know that you can only explain this significance when you consider the first order analog, the first order version of a Hardy field, which is called an which we call an H field. Yeah. So to explain, and I, yeah, it cannot be fully explained in the setting of Hardy fields. To explain uh, the significance of, uh, <clears throat> of these cuts, for all these cuts, we really need to go to the setting of H fields, and I I'll, requires the setting requires. The first order in the in the logical sense, right? Nothing to do with first order differential equations, but first order expressible in, in a natural first order language for order differential fields. Uh, first order counterpart, which I, I defined in my um, introductory lectures, but which I'll say again of. Uh, of, of the notion of a Hardy field. Well, um, containing R. Well, yeah, it's not really fully a first order counterpart of Hardy field, but it's it's a first order counter, first order counterpart to the notion of a Hardy field that contains R, um, <clears throat> namely, uh, namely, H fields. Let me say again what it is. It's an ordered differential field where the ordering and the derivation are um, interact in a certain way. Differential field. And let me, to contrast it with, to use another letter than H, I'll denote it by K <coughs> with constant field, let me denote it by C. Yeah, so that would be the reals when you can talk about Hardy fields containing the reals uh, such that, <clears throat> well, one, uh, let's say H1, um, F, if F is an element in K bigger than all the constants, then its derivative is positive. Um, H2, um, <clears throat> right, it says that every bounded element is equal to a constant plus an infinitesimal element. Now, uh, so O is the bounded elements, that means the things that are bounded by um, F and H, F and K, F in absolute value, you know, or, you have an ordered field, so you have the absolute value of f uh, is less than some constant. Some, some positive constant. <clears throat> and little o is it, so this is a valuation ring. Yeah? It's automatically a valuation ring. 
of k. And so it comes automatically with a, um, the obvious valuation. <clears throat> and little o is its maximal ideal. Uh, f in k. So here f will be less than um, c for all for all positive, for all C in the infinitesimal, so to say, the maximal ideal, it's maximal ideal. And we adopt all the usual notations um, when you have um, like, um, you know, when you have a valued field, you can all, then it automatically leads to uh, definitions to these binary relations. Um, on on the field right uh, F is dominated by G simply means that the valuation of F is greater than equal to the valuation of G, etc. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> and now just for this lecture for for these lectures I'm going to just add one extra condition simply to avoid certain uh, <clears throat> misstatements that I would other otherwise make. Namely, I also want to add the axiom that the derivation is, is small, which is not usually, which is not officially part of the definition of an H field, but just to avoid certain uh, um, misstatements, I'll just add it. Yeah. So just for today, just for today, I'm going to add the axiom that it's um, if f is um, small, f is small or infinitesimal, then right, meaning that it's in the maximal ideal, then f prime is also small. Right, so that is the small that is the axiom of the small derivation, <clears throat> which is true in, in Hardy fields. But there are in, uh, also H fields that where it's not true. Uh, I mean, in the official definition of an H field, for for us it it will be true by by assumption. Okay, and now um, so these H fields satisfy really the same universal properties um, as uh, our Hardy fields containing the reals. Um, and, also, and, and a lot of things that are true about Hardy fields are also true about H fields. And that's actually a part of the whole story that I don't want to go into too much, but um, <clears throat> um, in particular, an, an, an H field has an, is an asymptotic field and it's, um, asymptotic couple is, is, is H asymptotic. So it basically looks like that where the uh, dagger function is decreasing on the positive part of gamma and increasing on the negative part of gamma. That means of H type uh, or H asymptotic. <clears throat> um, okay, and now <clears throat> um, also the cuts, also these cuts that I'm going, the cuts uh, L infinity and um, <clears throat> and um, gamma and later and the uh, lambda and omega uh, that I'm going to introduce will make sense in the setting of H fields, uh, not just Hardy fields. And so, <clears throat> um, so let <clears throat> yeah. So the significance of the cut gamma. Uh, can be understood as follows. Um, so let so k h fields uh, from now on. Well, not for h field for for now. Yeah. For further notice, and um, <clears throat> and for if you take now an element in in k positive element, you can say that h is in the left part, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, left is the smaller things, right? Uh, if and only if. Now here I'm taking 
gamma now in the sense of k. Uh, and all these definitions that I made for, for Hardy fields um, work just as well for, for the, for, um, oh yeah, maybe I should also uh, unground it. Yeah. So it's asymptotic couple is ungrounded and gamma not zero, just to be on the safe side again. <clears throat> then H in gamma left uh, means that, um, um, yeah, that any antiderivative is bounded G, right, this means G again uh, is in the valuation, equivalently G is in the valuation link, so it's bounded by a constant. Uh, for every, for every antiderivative, G in every H field extension for every antiderivative in every H field extension. So this is, if you can think of antiderivative of H, yeah? anti of H yes. Thanks. Yeah. So in other words, G prime equals H. <coughs> The derivative g of sorry g of h in every in every h field extension of k and likewise h is in gamma right even only if um, yeah uh, maybe just to be on the safe side I should say. No, 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 this is what, what did I, for every antiderivative G uh, of H, no, and G dominates one for every, every antiderivative G of H in every H field extension, yeah? and there are always H field extensions where you can have an antiderivative, just like for Hardy fields, you always have Hardy field extension where you have antiderivatives in every H field extensions. Okay, and now, but now we want to explain what it means that to be that H realizes the cut, right? This is that H does not realize the cut, but H uh, not in gamma, um, H in other words, H realizes. So that's the third case, realizes uh, gamma. Well, what does that mean? That means um, it actually has an antiderivative like that in some H field extension. And it also has an antiderivative like that in some other H field extension, right? So, <clears throat> so H has an antiderivative, has an antiderivative. Uh, <clears throat> in some, in some, in some eight field extension of K and H and has also an antiderivative G dominating that dominates one in some in some other, yeah, in, an, in some eight field extension. Of course, these cannot be the same eight field extensions, right? If you have an antiderivative, then the other antiderivatives will differ from it. If you fix an eight field extension of K and you have an antiderivative there, then the other antiderivatives differ from it by a constant. And so they will also be dominated by one. And likewise, if you have an antiderivative that strictly dominates one, so it's unbounded, then any other antiderivative in the same H field extension uh, will differ from it by a constant and will therefore also strictly dominate one. So, um, right, but you, I think this is really the significance of, of this cut gamma. And the reason why one needs to talk about 
H fields instead of Hardy fields is that this equivalent is not true in the setting of Hardy fields. Not, it cannot be seen. It, it is simply undetectable in the setting of Hardy fields. Not true in Hardy field setting. So even if H, even if K here is a Hardy field, you have to go to H field extensions to see what the gap uh, not true in Hardy field, uh, not true in Hardy field setting. Excuse me? This direction is not true. Um, uh, let's say when I say it's not true in the Hardy field setting, I assume that K is a Hardy field and that I'm also considering instead of H field extensions, Hardy field extensions. That is what I mean by not true. This direction. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, it's no leaf, so you mean that you can realize it and not have an extension which is Hardy field. Uh, <laughs> if you are, okay, I, I'm not, if H is a Hardy field, if K is a Hardy field, and you have an uh, and have you have an H that realizes gamma, then of course it has an antiderivative in some Hardy field, and this antiderivative will always always be either in this case or no matter what Hardy field extension you, you take, because, or it will always be in that case. So you cannot detect. You only have. You have to get to eight field extensions to see the to see what um, why uh, why there is a difference. So so Hardy fields are are um, too poor or too um, small a class of eight fields to see the significance of uh, of these cuts. You can also think of it this way. This is kind of gamma left is a kind of certificate for having this property, antiderivative being bounded, and gamma right being there is a kind of certificate, a provable reason for this. Well, here in, the, in between, uh, you don't have a certificate, um, at least not approval. You just have to do the integration in the, in the reals, and see what happens. Uh, you cannot detect it uh, by by some definable condition, so to say. Yeah. Well, Hardy fields uh, have always small derivation. Hmm? Well, let's. Let's assume uh, just to be on the safe side that the psi set has a positive element. Uh, you're right. Um, strictly, <laughs> sometimes I'm not completely speaking the truth. Um, I I want um, here. I probably have to assume even more, namely that the psi set has a positive element. Um, yeah. So let me. Um, you're right, there is something. <clears throat> okay, some extra condition on K is needed to make the, the third clause true. Um, but the, the point that I want to, to make is simply that for Hardy fields, um, and you restrict here to Hardy field extensions, the equivalent will, will fail. <clears throat> Um, because you will always be um, for an H that realized gamma, you still have that in every Hardy field extension, all the antiderivatives are either bounded or um, or um, or, in, or or in all Hardy field extensions they are unbounded. Um, okay, so that is the, uh, one main point I wanted to make for uh, and and. For the other cuts that I'm going to discuss now, we have a similar kind of um, significance that requires H fields to. Um, okay, so now lambda again, uh, which I already introduced last time, 
but I, so I'm going to go quickly through. Um, now I'm going back to uh, the lambda um, that is sort of the next cut after gamma. So recall, recall, lambda rho was, uh, uh, what is it? Minus gamma rho dagger. Right. Yeah. Um, and um, you can think of it as sum over um, <clears throat> I less than equal to rho gamma I. This would be literally true if you are, for example, in the Liouville closure of the reals and the, the gammas, the gamma rows are just the gamma ends. <clears throat> The, the, um, the L rows are just the, the L ends and therefore the gamma ends are just like uh, there. And uh, yes, then this would be literally true. <clears throat> and then, um, yeah, lambda rho uh, is a strictly increasing, increasing, uh, pseudo Cauchy sequence. Yeah. Uh, the more terms you, the bigger row, the more terms the sum has, but they become smaller and smaller, particularly um, <clears throat> increasing PC sequence. But they do not go to zero in the field, right? So that's why we have to uh, say a pseudo Cauchy sequence rather than a Cauchy sequence. Um, <clears throat> and um, um, and then lambda, we we um, uh, we think of as minus gamma dagger, right? So which is again uh, symbolically speaking, um, one should simply go the sum over all rho of the gamma rows. Okay? So I again I put it in quotes because it's, these are just um symbolic uh, suggestive notations and strictly and lambda left that is lambda left what was that again um is everything that is below sum of the lambda rows right it's the, the set of all h and h so here i'm going back to my hardy field setting but this is actually what i'm saying also makes sense for um, h for h fields um Provided I, I I strengthen this smallness in a in a uh, yeah even so maybe the psi set should be should should have a positive element uh, uh, yeah this is a little stronger than than having a small derivation and and uh, and Elliot is is correct. Uh, was one of the statements I made. I need. I need to uh, for that last equivalence. I think I need this <clears throat> um, h and h <clears throat> h less than or equal to um, one of the gamma. Uh, one of those things um, h less than or equal to um, yeah, but I. Uh, H less than the lambda rho um, or some rho. And if you don't want these lambda rows as part of the definition, you could say it's the set of all H and H. It's that H less than or equal to minus F dagger. Some F. Um, where you have some F that is in gamma right. It's a little awkward that uh, in order to define the left part of the, this cut, you need to use the right part of the of gamma. Um, but that is because the dagger function, um, you know, uh, is a little um, behaves in a somewhat confusing way. <clears throat> um, right, and lambda right was. H and H. Um, yeah, actually, I should say, I, I will add lambda rho is a strictly increasing PC sequence, but 
there is also a strictly decreasing lambda rho plus gamma rho, which is strictly decreasing PC sequence. PC sequence. And all the lambda, all the lambda, lambda rows are smaller than all the terms here. I mean, they, um, and they have the same pseudo limits. I mean, they are so-called equivalent PC sequences. They have the same pseudo limits in all possible valued field extensions. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, equivalent, so let me say that equivalent. And the, the realizations of, of, of the cut lambda are exactly the pseudo limits of either this one or that one, because I have the same pseudo limits. But uh, here the ordering is also significant. So this is H is greater than equal to lambda rho plus gamma rho for some rho. Yeah. Um, okay, so so maybe I should should draw a picture. If this is the now uh, H, and um, well. We, we can't, we, we only consider really the positive part of H, right? And then so the, uh, the lambda rows, they, they increase, but you see, if you start with lambda zero here, then lambda one will be extremely close to lambda zero, <clears throat> and lambda two will be even much more closer to lambda one than lambda one is to lambda zero. So you can't really draw this in a, in a in a reasonable way so let me just uh, draw them as if they are far away from each other but in fact they the distance has become extremely small every step you take is the distance between the this one and the next one is much smaller than the distance between um, um <clears throat> this one and that one yeah so they they increase and now st let me start with lambda zero yeah, this is also a totally unrealistic picture. Lambda zero plus gamma zero is somewhere here, but in fact, it is very much also still very close to lambda zero, but it's impossible to draw that. And lambda zero, this is lambda one. Yeah, this is also a little bit anti-intuitive. You would think surely lambda one plus gamma one should be bigger than lambda zero plus gamma zero. No, although lambda one is bigger than lambda zero, um, the difference between gamma one is smaller than gamma zero in such a way that they, this is smaller yeah so here you get here you go the other way lambda two plus gamma two so so they approach yeah so so the, the, here is the gap gamma uh, lambda huh? lambda lambda here is the gap um <clears throat> Right, so this is this is maybe also a good picture to keep in mind. <clears throat> um, and now I uh, go uh, to um, trying to explain the significance of uh, lambda. <clears throat> um, Or lambda freeness, right? Again, um, <clears throat> let me see. Uh, okay, so uh, recall H. This is still from last time. Lambda free uh, equivalent to, by definition, this simply means that the the gap the gap lambda is not realized. You know, which we de decided to uh, indicate this way. <clears throat> Um, and and it implies gamma free. Uh, you can show that lambda free lambda free implies gamma free. Um, right, but not the other way around. Um, in fact, 
alpha free implies gamma free, not conversely, not conversely. Um, and here I also want to give a Hardy field example. <coughs> um, let me see. So we had our we had our our gamma uh, not our uh, Hardy field. Yeah, by this trans logarithmic construction, we had our Hardy field uh, R G, um, <clears throat> which is not which is not uh, gamma free, but um, but it is. Let me see. Uh, not gamma free. Uh, so it is also not lab. Yeah. So in since it is not gamma free, it is not lambda free either. So not. Right. So so not lambda. So it's not a. So of course, what I want is one that is um, gamma free, but not lambda free. Right. And so what we do is we simply take the sub um, field generated by uh, uh, the course well this basically tells you what you have to do you replace g by uh, g dagger or minus g dagger if you like <clears throat> yeah of the free uh, but r minus g dagger which is a, a proper a proper hardy subfield yeah, it's a hardy field over generated by r by minus d dagger is um, gamma free not lambda uh, wait a minute it's gamma free if i want a counter example i want to uh, have something that is um, lambda free but uh, not gamma free so so it's the other way I'm getting confused here. Uh, uh, converse. No, wait a minute. I want something that is uh, gamma free, but not lambda free. Yeah. Gamma free. Not lambda free. Right. Of course, these things need to be can be need to be proved. And uh, yeah, that is the element G. That's right. And and and, and here one. this one realizes uh, realizes lambda. Yeah, minus G realizes uh, lambda in 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 R minus G dagger, and so um, so it's not lambda free, right? Okay, and um, yeah, and again, uh, to explain the significance of um, explain the significance model theoretically, so to say, of um, lambda freeness. <coughs> um yeah we need again to go to the setting of h fields and everything i i said here about lambda in the context of hardy fields also works just for h fields um well in the, for the h fields that i was considering <clears throat> um with the same uh, definitions so um, let me see where do I have this example? Um, yeah. So to 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 us, well, at least I mean this significance of uh, lambda free. Um, at least one way to look at it is is, is a realization of of. Of lambda is basically uh, a, a gap creator. Um, so 
gap creation or non well gap creation well this is in some sense the significance not of being not lambda free but um let me okay so k and here to be on the safe side i'll consider k to be a real closed yeah there is not a, a very big restriction h field and uh, <clears throat> um let me see um and h h again a positive element then what does it mean h realizes sorry h is in the left part of um no here i'm just going to say what it means to be in the third case namely that that uh, what it means to realize um lambda this means that lambda creates a gap when you go to a certain when you go to an extension yeah that exists exists g greater than zero in some h field extension extension um <clears throat> let's say let me call it k star of k um such that h is minus d dagger yeah minus d dagger and um the value yeah um the valuation of g is a gap in other words is a, is a gap in the asymptotic couple in other words g realizes yeah why don't i just say g realizes uh gamma in in k star yeah that's an easier way to say it now that i have this terminology available and g realizes uh gamma in in the sense of k star um right well because i want to consider um i want this to be positive uh h yeah i i was restricting everything to if i insist on k h being positive then um then and i want g to be positive um then i have to take the minus sign here right but you're right the, the valuation does not this distinguish between plus or minus of an element uh, but uh, yeah <clears throat> but okay and you see this is this is a bit like this example here <clears throat> um here we have this element h that um is not lambda free so it realizes lambda in um and and it and this element h is exactly of the form minus g dagger <coughs> um so here actually we do have uh an hardy field where this happens but in in general you have to um well actually i'm not really sure if you if you have to go to h field extensions here um yeah yeah no you have to um um oh wait did i am i right here you might have here it might be true even in the setting of h field but instead of h field sorry it might be true in the setting of hardy fields where everything um where instead of h field extension i take hardy field extension and k is also a hardy field i i i i'm not at the moment totally sure about that um i uh, no, no yeah you, you that's right this this equivalence would actually be make sense in the setting of hardy fields um nevertheless the way we we think of it as is that h realizes lambda basically means that it um, creates a gap by adjoining an element g to your um, <clears throat> um, 
yeah in fact this will happen when you whenever you join any element in an h field uh, with this property uh, then it will that element will realize a gap <coughs> in that h field so so it's not just in some but in any h field extension where you have this and you take the h field that is generated by g over k it will realize that it will um, realize the the gap gamma there <coughs> Okay, uh, so now it's time to go to yeah. Uh, one other remark I want to make: what is the, roughly speaking, the significance of, roughly speaking, um, lambda free freeness guarantees good behavior. <coughs> guarantees. Guarantees. Yeah, no, no strange exceptions. I mean, this 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 whole area is full of uh, special cases and 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 the like. But once you are lambda free, guarantees um, good behavior for slu for behavior. Um, how 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 did I say that? Good control, good behavior, good control. um good control um for on h field extensions uh, k y where y satisfy where y satisfies some um <clears throat> First order linear differential equation, a y plus b, yeah. a b and k. Yeah. So if you have a, uh, an, uh, uh, right, that is roughly what what it, what it amounts to in in, in practice. <clears throat> okay, so now finally the omega, which is the most uh, important cut of all. Um, <clears throat> And which has the most striking uh, consequences if you are omega free. Omega free means basically you are in heaven. Nothing bad can happen anymore when you join. Um, everything behaves uh, in a magically nice way. <clears throat> But before I can, uh, so for every differential field, so omega, but, but for, for every differential field, we have for every differential field, uh, let's see, f, yeah, we have the function, we have the function omega, yeah. Not to be confused with omega bar. This is, of course, they are related, uh, but it's uh, a function which is just omega of uh, an element z is minus 2z prime minus z squared. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I will get back to the significant how this arises um, later on, but probably some people will notice that this is like a Riccati polynomial. Um, and that means it's it's related to second order differential equations, although this is of course only first order, but nevertheless um, um, right. And then the point is that omega as a function, right, is strictly increasing yeah not not a trivial fact, but um on the left part of lambda uh, yeah yeah remain uh, did i already erase the picture yeah i guess i did uh, remember uh, you had um, um 
which is uh, the left part of lambda. Yeah. And here they have the right part and there might be something in between in case it's not lambda free. But in any case, um, omega is strictly increasing on lambda left. Uh, this is true in both uh, eight fields and, 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 um, and Hardy fields. <clears throat> And um, and now we simply for the Hardy field we say om omega rho or an H field omega rho is the value of lambda rho when you apply the function omega to it. Yeah. So um, and um, and symbolically this looks like um, the sum of the gamma rho gamma i square i less than equal to rho. <clears throat> um, right. Yeah, so lambda rho was the sum of the gamma i's for i less than equal to rho, but omega, um, omega rho is the sum of the gamma i square. Um, yeah. Again, this is literally true if you are in the Liouville closure of the reals and you take for the um, you take the the gamma n's and the lambda n's that we defined there. <clears throat> then, uh, if you apply the function omega to lambda n, you just get the sum of the i less than equal to n's of the, of the gamma. Yeah. So, in other words, the sum over one over l zero square plus one over l zero one l one square plus dot 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 plus one over L zero square, L one square to L n square. Um, right, it's um, <clears throat> okay. And so again, the omega rows now are again strictly increasing. Uh, omega strictly increasing. Um, <clears throat> PC sequence. And just like with lambda rho, you get it's it's in some sense lambda rho is almost a baby version of omega rho. Um, you if you if you take omega rho plus now you take gamma rho square. Oh, yeah, I should put a, a bar here too. Um, omega rho plus gamma rho square is strictly decreasing. PC sequence, a positive, and they are equivalent. They are equivalent, uh, so they the picture is 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 like um, <clears throat> for lambda, namely um, you have um, you have omega zero, uh, omega one, omega two increasing. And on the other side, you have omega zero plus gamma zero square, omega one plus gamma one square, and they, they decrease. And somewhere there is a cut in between, right? Um, they increase, they decrease. All the ones here are smaller than all the ones there. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, let me say that. Uh, all the omega rows are smaller than all the terms here yeah not just the same row but all of them so you have a decreasing sequence here increasing there and and what is in between realizes the um, the cut <coughs> uh, omega right so um, where, um, where do I have my uh, let me see oh. Right. Um, yeah, so maybe. Oh, yeah, I did. I still have the picture of the lambdas. Uh, so the picture for the omegas is, is, uh, is similar. Uh, um, right, but they are, of course, located in different places in on the H line. Um, Maybe I should. Uh, 
uh -huh, maybe I should again first do the real uh, the exit um, wait should I uh, right well in a way I defined I didn't explicitly say what omega omega left and omega right are but I think it's omega left of course everything that is going to be less than something uh, less than equal to oh, yeah the set of all eights and eights and again this is also true for not just for Hardy fields but also for H fields H uh, less than uh, omega rho some rho and omega right is all those things that are greater than omega uh, h and h h greater than equal to omega rho plus gamma rho square rho and um, and so this defines the cut omega <coughs> and um, <coughs> And then, of course, you have the obvious notion of omega three, uh, h omega three, even only if, uh, yeah, this cut is not realized in h, <coughs> so there's nothing that fits that is bigger than all the gamma omega rows and less than all the omega rho plus gamma rho squares, <coughs> and. Um, yeah okay and we have the implications um omega three is stronger than lambda three and we already yeah so i i can now add to this omega three and again this is this is in the setting of eight fields as well <coughs> Omega three implies lambda three, and again, this implication cannot be reversed. And you can predict, I think, now what an example of that is. Um, <clears throat> right. Uh, 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 not reversible. Uh, we had our we had already the, uh, the you know that means I, I have to come up with something that is uh, lambda free but not omega free uh, we had the um, <clears throat> uh, non the the Hardy field Hardy field uh, well, RG, R, uh, RG, uh, which was not gamma free. Then we had uh, uh, Hardy fields R minus G dagger. Yeah, it was um, um, right. It was um, not lambda free. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, gamma free but not lambda free and now we take the omega of that and now r of if we apply omega to this element and take the take this hardy subfield generated by it is uh, lambda free but not omega free not omega. i mean this 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 these things need some attention to prove. I mean, it's not, not, um, <clears throat> but it, I think it makes sense. Uh, right. Okay. And now the significance that it, omega three has a very nice significance, <clears throat> uh, which is, yeah. Um, okay. <clears throat> Here we go. Significance. Of, um, of omega for our for h h is our hardy field 
um, an ungrounded non-trivial valuation. And um, uh, well, here it is, here we go. F, when is F a, and again, we get some very nice certificate for of a certain kind, namely that F is in omega right, is the same as um, all solutions of a certain second order, all solutions of um, Y double, well, four Y double, but that don't pay too much attention to this four. This is just to make things out, come out uh, correctly, is zero in, in this ambient, very big ambient ring <coughs> of um, are non oscillating, are, are non oscillating. And this has as a consequence that they all lie in this in a Hardy field. And they gen this whole set of solutions generates a Hardy field. Yeah. And then, and then. The entire set of solutions. Solutions generate a Hardy field extension of of uh, omega. Yeah. Of course, you only need to take two solutions because this is a second order linear differential equation, so it has a basis as a vector space over R of two elements. And so um, you just need to generate uh, a join two, two of those solutions, but they, they can be a joint and generate a, they generate a Hardy field. And F in uh, omega left, well, it's the opposite, namely all solutions, all non-trivial solutions, zero solution, Count as non oscillating. Um, so all non trivial solutions are oscillating. All solutions, all non trivial solutions of word y double plus fy equals zero in C are oscillating. Um, right, and of course they do not lie in a Hardy field, but they actually do lie in a certain, uh, you can adjoin certain cosines and sines of certain elements where they lie. Um, then you don't get a Hardy field, but you get some some other object where they lie in. <clears throat> um, right. So now, what is the meaning of? Um, <clears throat> so this again means that omega right is a kind of certificate for this happening, and um, <clears throat> and omega left is a kind of certificate for that happening in a provable way. Again, yeah, for for H. This is stated now in the H field, in the Hardy field setting. For H fields, um, the first condition, yeah, if instead of H here you have an H field, then you would, then the, then the um, <coughs> equivalence uh, takes another form, namely that, um, <coughs> that, um, there is an H field extension with two C linearly independent solutions of this equation, right? And therefore also, yeah, that's, that's the form it takes in the H field setting. And then this second equivalence takes the form that um, there is no um, H field that contains any, sorry, there is no H field extension that contains any non-trivial solution of uh, of uh, this uh, equation. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, right. Now again, for 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 the the third possibility that the omega is um, is realized in H, you really need to go again to the A, the H field setting. <clears throat> And um, this cannot be explained fully in terms of uh, body fields. So, um, so F realizes again, we are now, yeah, so for K, H fields, yeah, so. And F is now rather than an Hardy field, it's an element of K, which is positive. And then F in omega, F realizes, F realizes uh, <coughs> omega, if and only if, well, either can happen. Um, some H field extension, some H field an H field extension uh, has a non trivial, has, well, let's say, even has um, C linearly independent two, has two C linearly independent solutions. Um, for y double plus f y is zero, and also the opposite happens, and some other. Yes, uh, the opposite meaning, of course, it's you have to say there is a differential field extension with a with a solution that uh, is not contain. Yeah, that cannot be made into an H field. So, and there is uh, a differential field extension, not an H extension, uh, field extension. Um, K, Y, yeah, in fact, just as a field, it's just generated by Y and Y prime because uh, such that uh, Y double plus F Y equals zero. Uh, and why not zero? Such that uh, this cannot be ordered in such a way that it becomes an H field. Yeah? Such that um, K, Y, Y prime cannot be ordered to orbit to uh, make it an H field extension of K. An eight field extension. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You see that this is this this equivalence um, makes no sense in the Hardy field setting because in the Hardy field, if you have a, um, Yeah, no, right. Anyway, yes. Okay. I, I think I'll uh, um, say not more about this now, uh, but okay. Um, so I want to say more about omega freeness and why it is such a powerful property because this looks pretty arbitrary. You might even say, okay, we have now uh, gone to. Um, the sum of the gamma squares, why not go to the sum of the gamma cubes? <laughs> and in fact, there are, there are cases, there are situations where one, ha one has to look at those things. The sum of the higher powers of gamma, that it, there are situations where these things have to be looked at as well. <clears throat> but uh, magically, it turns out that this is the end of the story as far as uh, our model theory is concerned. Um, <clears throat> Because of the following. Uh, excuse me. Yes. Yes. May I, I ask uh, something? Uh, yes. Fernando Sanz. 
Yeah, it's yeah. about your the dichotomy that you have uh, put there. Uh, the significance of uh, f uh, belongs to omega left or omega right. Yes. Uh, yeah, because in the in the right side of this uh, of these uh, implications of these characterizations, uh, the dichotomy in the right it's uh, it's um, complete. I mean, uh, when you have if f is is uh, is an element in a Hardy field, then either uh, all solutions are non oscillating or all solutions are oscillating. Is that the... you're right? Th that is yeah. why. Oh, that is exactly why I'm saying that this that uh, yes, in a Hardy field, every f for every f positive f, either this happens or that happens. Yeah, but it's not the case that it's either this or that. It's uh, it's true that either this or that, but it's not true that either this or that. So that's why the why the significance of omega freeness cannot be explained in the in the context of of Hardy fields. Ah, yes. Yeah, so H, so H is uh, your H. Uh, there is a is an H field, not necessarily a Hardy field. This is what you. Because the way I, I wrote I, it, I, I really mean exactly what I wrote. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So H here. Um, yeah. Okay. These equivalences are, um, yeah, are for for Hardy fields. H, H is a Hardy field, but omega right and omega left do make sense in any H field. Um, but you're right. For a Hardy field, either this or that. Yeah, but not. It doesn't mean that it's either this or that. That, that because yeah. there are omega free Hardy fields where um, you see the point is that these are definable cuts. Yeah, omega. These are definable sets, and um, the point and the um, how do you say the omega that you um, have in mind is simply by definition this. Or that, and but that is not necessarily a defined. Well, it's not obviously definable, um, or not in a way that we 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 uh, we need for the, for the model theory. Um, yeah, no, my, maybe maybe I do did not understand very well. But my my problem is is it what happens if if in a Hardy field you can realize the 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 gap? I mean, uh, you have an F. In a Hardy field, uh, which uh, which is not in the left or in the right, I mean that's right. Uh, there are in Hardy fields where that where you have this situation, and there and and you see that um, um, ah. um, and and so then in a in an eight field extension, you can have uh, both be you have both possible behaviors. Of course, in a Hardy field extension, only one of the behaviors is possible, because yeah, um, yeah as you say, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, this is a, this is really a, a, a situation where the model theoretic point of view becomes becomes essential. Um, I'm afraid. So, um, but let me let me. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to think more with, about it. Uh, yeah, one has to really read the chapters um, um, in our book about that. I mean, I'm, I'm just giving a very vague um, account of what's happening there, but um, or very phenomenological account. Um, but um, let me say what um, the omega freeness. Okay. Fortunately. Most things are omega free, right? Um, um, you have to do particular special constructions to come up with things that are not omega free, but nevertheless, uh, they have to be taken into account in the model theoretic, uh, in the model theory. Mm. Omega free as omega freeness as, as um, unexpectedly. I mean, for us, for us, for us, it. Be, it was totally unexpected that this had such consequences. 
unexpectedly strong consequences. And let me um, let me mention one. <clears throat> there are many, but um, <clears throat> one of them is that, uh, and this is again again in the Hardy in the eight field setting, k is omega three implies that any differentially algebraic, any differentially algebraic, algebraic um, H field, H field um, extension of uh, K star of K is also omega free. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the difference with uh, lambda free. Lambda free is uh, is in general not preserved when you go to differentially algebraic extensions, although it is preserved when you go to algebraic extensions, like taking the algebraic closure or the real closure. <clears throat> yeah, I say algebraic closure because in our real development in the book. Everything is done in much greater generality than, than I can tell here, um, where you can also take out the break closures instead of real closures. But anyway, um, any, uh, it's also omega free and um, its asymptotic couple cannot have elements that are positive but smaller than every positive element of the asymptotic couple of gamma uh, of K. And, um, it's asymptotic couple, H asymptotic couple. It's also an asymptotic couple, gamma star, C star, has no elements, gamma star, such that it's positive, but smaller than every. Um, uh, for all for all for all positive elements in gamma, right? Um, like you cannot squeeze something in between zero and all the positive elements of of the original asymptotic couple. Yeah. So here, k with asymptotic couple. Which is actually H asymptotic, as I said, uh, gamma psi. Right. Um, so this turns out to be very powerful. Um, and um, you can, roughly speaking, what it means is that omega free guarantees good behavior <coughs> uh, when adjoining solutions. To any else break uh, differential equation over K, um, you would not just for second order, um, as you might expect, but for all um, algebraic differential equations you have, it somehow controls everything that happens above it when you go to differentially algebraic extensions <coughs> in a right. Okay, yeah, I want to finish uh, today with um, explaining a little bit more about the role of this function omega. I already mentioned it's kind of a Riccati uh, polynomial. Um, and these appear naturally when you talk about linear differential equations. So, <clears throat> and this will uh, hopefully, um, Take some a little bit uh, uh, the mystery away from uh, from these definitions. Why? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's one trick that um, <clears throat> that is very similar to um, to the trick of. Well, Completing the square when you 
consider quadratic equations, and that is uh, getting rid of the linear term or of the first degree term uh, or the um, yeah so uh, so what about what about omega this function this function that I defined there minus two z prime minus z square um, <clears throat> let k be any yeah so here I can take any differential field let f be any differential field. Um, and consider, yeah, uh, well, let's assume for simplicity that uh, everything there is a dagger. Because if we look, for, if, we, uh, if we are in a Leoville closed Hardy field, then everything there is a dagger. So let's yeah, and assume for simplicity. Simplicity. That uh, uh, F consists. All the things are daggers. F is a dagger, uh, or F dagger. F non-zero element of K, right? Which is true if you have a Liouville closed. Hardy field, for example, <clears throat> and consider a second order. Consider uh, a second order ODE, linear ODE, homogeneous, homogeneous uh, linear ODE, uh, Y double plus A. A y prime plus b y zero. Right. Now we want to get rid of this a here, and that is that is a standard trick. Uh, take g, take a non-zero g such that g equals, and I hope I got this right, g dagger equals minus a half a. And set. Yeah, now we change variables. We, we plug in for y, g, z. Yeah. <clears throat> so z is now a new unknown. <clears throat> um, but uh, then, then uh, the above ODE transforms into uh, transforms into transforms into Uh, y z double yeah. of course then it becomes an equation uh, and now the this term disappears uh, so you get z double plus uh, f z equals zero that f is a certain expression build up from a and b and, and g which i'm not going to write down but um, <coughs> and also for um, to avoid certain fractions <coughs> Uh, later on, I'm I'm going to put here a, a four, like I uh, let me see. Uh, oh, I I already yeah right. In fact, so so we may as so we may as well well restrict attention restrict attention to. Uh, to uh, to the case to the uh, case well and here I put a four but it's not too important why four y double plus f y is zero of course if you write this as f over four and put a four there <clears throat> then you get exactly what what this form um, <clears throat> right. Right and um, <clears throat> yes. What's k? Oh, f of course. F. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, right. Uh, oh, haha. <laughs> I see. I made a mistake here. 
here I had a four, but I, here I forgot it. Right. You see, that is the same equation that, that we uh, considered here. And now I want to explain how, why this equation uh, leads to uh, this Riccati polynomial omega. <clears throat> yeah, so omega is this function, right? Okay, so um, uh, let me see, where am I? Okay, and that, that is a, a fairly simple computation, um, right, for y not zero, or y double, you see we are simply factoring, we are divide, we are factoring out y, That's y zero, uh, or this is y multiplied by four y double over y uh, uh, plus f, and this can be rewritten is, is y times omega of uh, uh, let me see now of f minus f minus omega of Two y dagger. Yeah, so if you factor out y, um, and you can rewrite this as uh, yeah, this term four y double over y is, is simply omega of two y dagger. If you do the computation, you will see that that's the case. So what does this mean? This means that this has uh, so therefore. <coughs> 4y double plus fy is zero has a non-trivial solution, has a non-trivial solution, let's say in F, right? In the same differential field um, that we started out with <coughs> is, is the same as saying that um, that uh, right since we are assuming that f is um, f must be in the image of this of omega yeah. f is the omega of f f is in the image of right because um, if you have a non-trivial solution <coughs> then for a non-zero y, this, this product becomes zero. That means that f is in the image. And conversely, if f is in the image, you write f equals omega of, and then since we are assuming that capital F, all elements of capital F are daggers, it means that f can be written as omega two y dagger for some y. And so, okay, so you see that uh, the condition for this to have a non-trivial solution in, in suitable differential fields is, is equivalent to condition that you have um, this and so that is really where this omega um, comes in <clears throat> um, right but of course there is more if you want to see the whole story as far as we um, uh, worked it out you can look at section 5.2 in in our book um, and um, for example, what if F is not in here? <clears throat> uh, how can you find solutions? Then you have to go to an extension and, and, and so on to find solutions. <clears throat> um, okay, well, I'm a little bit early now, but I think I will leave, I will, I will ask for questions um, or stop depending on And I have to make a decision about what I'm going to do next. Uh, uh, so yeah, this is a, this whole story was a little bit uh, impressionistic.
um, and without proofs. But uh, I wanted to give you a, a sense of uh, why these cuts, how these cuts occur and why, and why they have to be considered. <coughs> This equivalence doesn't say anything about oscillation or non oscillation. That's right. Yeah, this is purely differential algebraic. No, no uh, asymptotics or, or whatever uh, are the fields involved. Right. So if you go to, um, and of course, <clears throat> yes. I, I will, yeah, this, this, yeah, maybe I should say one more thing. <clears throat> this case where uh, in, yeah, maybe I can say a few, uh, one more thing that um, comes out of our work and which to our knowledge was not known, but maybe someone can, can correct me. Um, and which is, although it has been claimed by, by people, um, once without the proof and once with a wrong proof, but uh, okay. Interesting fact, important, well, yeah, I think it's an important fact about Hardy fields. Important fact about Hardy fields, and that has to do with the oscillating case. Let's suppose, yeah, consider Hardy um, fields H. Uh, consider um, uh, a second order a linear ODE. Well, let's say Y double plus. Uh, a y prime plus b y zero. Uh, then, and suppose we are in the oscillating case. Suppose, suppose, and as uh, as was mentioned, uh, we must be either in the oscillating case or um, or um, all solutions will be in a Hardy field extension. Suppose um there is no suppose it has all solutions solutions in uh, c infinity are, uh, are oscillate are non non zero non trivial solutions because the zero solution counts as oscillating uh, oscillating The other possibility is that all solutions are non-oscillating and then they lie in a Hardy field extension. But in this case, then um, there are G C in a Hardy field extension. So they really do lie in a Hardy field extension of H such that the solutions are exactly um, such that um, well, what is it? Uh, CG cosine C plus D. Where C and D, uh, C and D are real numbers. Yeah. So all these um, <clears throat> What shall we say? All these are exactly the solutions. Uh, is uh, solu is set of solutions. In uh, in this big right. So all the solutions can, in some sense, are still describable in terms of um, of um, Hardy fields. Um, but this phi here is going to be very large. So it is a very, 
fast oscillating uh, function. <clears throat> um, and so it, the cosine of this thing does not lie in a Hardy field uh, because of feed being so large. Right, but <laughs> curiously, this was claimed by Bojanitsan in this book on in this uh, paper on second order differential equation but he said the proof will be given in a later paper and this never appeared and i actually asked him in emails uh, if he if he had a proof oh yeah he said I'm, I'm going to write it down and i will come back to you never happened um, and there is another paper by where this was claimed, uh, but the proof is totally wrong uh, from the from the first lemma down. So, um, but we do know this now. Um, but it's one of the consequences of the uh, of, of the full story. That's yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop here. <clears throat> But who knows, maybe there is something that we missed uh, that um, that it is known somehow. Oh, it isn't the Everything is open to me. 